All right. We're looking at elements of sophisticated thermodynamics. And in the last lecture, we saw how we um, have already looked at the origin of uh, the thermodynamic variable entropy. Um, the statistical origin of entropy. And we said that we will specifically focus on or uh, con consider systems whose temperature is specified. So we are looking at systems whose temperature is specified. Uh, and temperature is normally specified, we know, by connecting the system to a heat bath. And the system comes into equilibrium with the heat bath and acquires the temperature of the heat bath. So we therefore are looking at a system which in the jargons of statistical mechanics is called canonical system. Uh, I'm not going to take you through too many of those jargons, but just sort of throwing these words around so that if you become familiar with them. There are three kinds um, depending upon how you look at the system when we looked at thermodynamic systems, we actually considered thermodynamic systems which are completely isolated. Then we also considered thermodynamic systems which are connected to a heat bath or an energy bath. And then we also considered thermodynamic systems which are completely open, that they not only were able to exchange heat with the reservoir, but also were able to exchange uh, uh, matter or particles with the reservoirs. So there were those three conditions. And this is one of them, the middle one, where the system is connected only to a source of energy or heat from which it um, uh, can exchange energy or heat depending upon the temperature difference and therefore temperature gets to be specified. For such a system, um, the probability of finding a system in Rf of all these states available to it is proportional to, this is what we, uh, where we ended the last time, is proportional to exponential of minus um, the energy uh, r, e r or epsilon r of the r state divided by k t is proportional to this and this is this factor is called the Boltzmann factor So system has a large number of states available to it. Each one of them has a different probability of occurrence. And the probability of occurrence of the system, of finding the system in the R state, is proportional to this exponential. And therefore, we say that this is actually probability PR is equal to some constant C times exponential of minus minus uh, epsilon r over kt. And then we invoke the very fundamental principle of the concept of probability that when you sum over all the probabilities, probabilities of all the possible states of the system, 
the sum of all probabilities is equal to 1, all the probabilities must add to 1, therefore this is equal to 1, which means that <coughs> sum over all R C or C outside exponential of minus um, epsilon R over KT which specifies C for us. C becomes equal to 1 over exponential of minus epsilon R over KT. Okay, let's write down clearly over here. C is um, 1 over um, sum over R. Let me raise it quickly because I was <coughs> From this expression, you clearly see that C is equal to sum over R exponential of minus epsilon R over KT. So, this is essentially using the principle that sum of all probabilities is equal to 1, all probabilities added to 1, therefore C is equal to this. And if C is equal to this, then probability of finding the system in one of these states, let us say, probability of finding the system in the state S is equal to exponential of minus <coughs> uh, epsilon S over KT divided by sum over R exponential of minus epsilon <coughs> R over KT. <coughs> Okay, so this is how the probability is defined in a canonical system, in a system whose temperature is specified. Okay, <coughs> yeah, no more talk. All right, and over here. Um, you will notice that the variable or the index on which you sum um, does it should not appear on the other side. This is the basic principle of summation. Alright, now if this is the case, then any once you know the probability then average of any quantity calculating average of any quantity becomes fairly simple. So suppose x of r is uh, a particular property of the system. I don't know what that is. x could be volume, could be temperature, could be uh, could be energy, could be spin, could be anything. x so the average of x is simply by definition sum over r x r times p r. This is the basic definition of averages. And hence, if you want to find the average uh, energy, average energy energy of each state is given by that average energy E bar is actually what we in thermodynamics call internal energy U is equal to sum over we said S let me go back to that sum over S epsilon S P S where epsilon s is the um, energy of the asset state. And then I can substitute this relationship of P s over here, so u will become equal to sum over s epsilon s exponential of minus epsilon s over kt divided by sum over 
R exponential of minus epsilon R over K. All right. Let me let us simplify things a little. Let us say beta is e equal to one over k. Call one over k t um, as beta. So if this is the case, then our simpl simplified notation would be that it is sum over s epsilon s exponential of minus beta epsilon s divided by यहाँ वहाँ खड़े में चले गए या अभी हैं खड़े में खड़े हैं और किसको देर हो रही है वाह दे तुम सलाम बड़ी देर से मैं आपके सलाम का इंतजार कर रहा हूँ Sum over R exponential of minus beta epsilon R. Okay, this is internal energy. So system exists in a number of possible configurations or states, and each one of them has an energy, an energy that we write as epsilon s, and then internal energy is supposed to be this. You have a question. What is the difference? R and S are being used as indices. R, S, and similar numbers will be used. It's small. S is small s, which is not to be confused with entropy. Okay. So these are indices uh, uh, defining or uh, or uh, um, okay defining states of the system. So if the system has three states, R will be equal to one, two, three. Okay. So our question is, why are we using different notations? Why didn't we use just R? No. Um, there would have been confusions. There would have been some um, confusions which would have led to. Uh, mathematical errors. Therefore, uh, uh, for different summations, we use different indices. Um, if I were to use R, for example, over here, suppose I were to say this is P R and A e R over here, then you would have said that look, there is this exponential of E R. This the same exponential is appearing in the numerator and the denominator. Although this is being summed, it is a part of the summation, but you would have sort of confused the two. Many of you may have uh, uh, been inclined to sort of cancel them out, uh, which would have been wrong. Okay? So uh, what we are doing is uh, um, trying to avoid such a thing and therefore write different things. And in doing that, we are not making any mistake. We are only um, trying to be clear. So, so we have this expression now for internal energy. Let us also do a little bit of uh, further simplification by um, <coughs> defining a new quantity. Um, define. Um, sum over R exponential of minus beta epsilon R as <coughs> write it Z. Okay? Call it Z. And uh, um, this will help us in writing quantities in terms of Z. Let me tell you how we would write now u, we would be able to write u as um, uh, 
we would be able to write uh, because of this P, we would be able to write P of R of P of S of P of R uh, as exponential of minus beta epsilon S over Z. We would also be able to write U as equal to summation over S epsilon S exponential of minus beta epsilon S divided by Z. No big deal, so what? But the big deal comes in when you say notice that um, if I were to calculate d by d beta of log z, this will be a partial differential with respect to beta of log z, log of summation over r exponential of minus beta epsilon r. If I were to do this, differentiate this quantity, I will get, because it is differential of log, therefore I will get 1 over that quantity. So I will get 1 over sum over r exponential of minus beta epsilon r. And in the numerator, I will get then summation over r epsilon r exponential of uh, minus, this is a minus sign also, minus epsilon r will come out and then exponential of minus beta epsilon r. Is it, is it, is it alright with everybody? So now differentiation, simple differentiation and uh, since this differentiation gives you a quantity like this. Now if I take you to the way I define u, you will notice that this is actually minus u. Alright? This is minus u, minus internal energy. So, z turns out to be a convenient quantity for us because u is minus partial differential of um, uh, with respect to beta of log z. Z therefore turns out to be useful quantity and we call z partition function. Partition function why? Because it tells you how energies are partitioned into different states. Um, and that is turned out to be a very central function in statistical mechanics. In statistical thermodynamics, statistical mechanics, partition function comes out to be a very, very central function. You calculate partition function and then many other properties just follow one after the other. Uh, this was one example and now I'm going to tell you how partition function um, uh, uh, from partition function one can calculate a number of other thermodynamic quantities. Okay. Uh, you recall that uh, I wrote here P S is equal to this. So if I um, say uh, log P S from there, 
log P S will be equal to why am I doing this? Okay, let me let me first tell you why am I uh, why why I am doing this. You recall that entropy is defined as minus P S minus summation over S P S log P S. Okay, I could write summation over R P R log P R, but this is the standard definition. This definition I gave you many, many lectures ago. So here is log P S and I want to calculate log P S from here. P S is given over there, so log P S is equal to log of uh, uh, exponential of minus beta epsilon s over um, z which means that this is equal to you take log of a over b is log a minus log b and log a is minus beta epsilon s and then minus log z is the log of this whole quantity. Okay, <coughs> and um, this is log here. So uh, entropy should be equal to minus summation over S P S, which is uh, exponential of uh, uh, which is one over Z times exponential of minus beta epsilon s multiplied by minus beta epsilon s minus log z. Okay. Um, And um, or rather than do, doing this, let me just um, sit, let, let me just write it as minus summation over s p s and minus beta epsilon s uh, minus log z. Just write this as if you are taking the average of this quantity. I would have, I should have continued with that also, but then average of this quantity. And uh, the first quantity um, is average of epsilon s minus beta times average of epsilon s this is equal to minus beta minus and minus plus beta times um, sum over s p s epsilon s and then plus uh, sum over s p s log x log z this is beta u see the minus sign where am I when I made a mistake of this minus sign I have made this mistake of minus sign from where um, no, no, I'm fine. Good, sorry. I um, I should go back and correct myself over here. Over here, there is this K also because otherwise dimensions will not be okay. So entropy is minus K times all of this. 
and so I should take a, my, a, keep a k over here, Boltzmann constant, and if I and then a k over here, Boltzmann constant, and um, that will continue here with a k um, here and here. Okay, so this is k times beta times um, u and then plus k times average of log z from the basic principles of averaging we know that average of the average average of an average is the same itself okay log z is automatically already an average okay so uh, log z average of log z which is what this term is saying is the same as log z. So entropy has come out to be equal to k times uh, beta u plus log z. Uh, internal energy is minus d by d beta of log z and entropy is this quantity and, and we quickly see that since beta is uh, um, 1 over kt so this is actually um, uh, u over t plus um, uh, k times log z and then I multiply on the two this side with t on the two sides okay all right so I see immediately that u minus Es is equal to minus k times log z. Huh? Kt, yes, sorry. Yeah, yes, yes. Good. And u minus ts is? u minus ts is? and goes for units. So F is equal to minus KT log Z which means that 1 over KT if I can bring it out over here so I will see that log Z is actually minus beta F Right? Log z is minus beta f, which means that the partition function actually is equal to exponential of minus beta f. Partition function is equal to exponential of minus beta times the Helmholtz free energy or Helmholtz free energy is equal to minus kt times log z. So we are making contact with thermodynamics over here. Um, connecting with thermodynamic variables, first u, then s, then free energy. And uh, we know that uh, from our knowledge of the free energy, uh, df by dv at constant t it is known you know it that is equal to minus pressure right so you you know this already pressure is minus tf by dv so at constant t so therefore pressure is equal to is minus and minus become plus 
and you are only differentiating uh, these constants. So this is equal to k times t times d log z by dv at constant temperature. So pressure is also related to this quantity. So we have internal energy, we have entropy, we have uh, Helmholtz PD energy and we have pressure. We have volume is taken to be a quantity which will be um, which will be if you know something that is to be given to start with. Uh, in fact, in some situations you can also calculate volume in terms of the partition function. But here we have made this contact between in all of these things that I have written over here, we have connected the statistical calculations with the thermodynamics that we know. So starting with the statements on probability, we defined partition function averages and we defined partition function as simply sum over all states. Partition function, another statement for this is sum over all states. Now so when you say sum over all states, it means sum over all states weighted with their respective probabilities. Sum over all states weighted with respective probabilities. Each state occurs with a different probability. So you sum over all states and the probabilities are proportional to this Boltzmann factor. So you weigh all these states with their respective uh, probability functions and sum over all of them, when you sum over all of them, that is called the partition function. And partition function turns out to be a quantity which is related to all thermodynamic quantities and from which you can actually, once you calculate partition function, you can calculate all thermodynamic quantities, including entropy, including internal energy, pressure, uh, temperature is supposed to have been given uh, from the beginning. Okay. You could also actually see from here, well, this is the same thing as looking at this function in an inverse way. If you were to only recall that entropy is minus partial differential of F with respect to T at constant B from your not in the thermodynamics, yeah. No, actually no, no. So, so you're saying if I if I make a statement over here weighted with their respective probabilities, then I should put a PR over here. So but PR is exponential of minus beta epsilon R. Is it not? PR is exponential of minus beta as on R multiplied by some constant, which is proportional to that. This is what we said over here. So this is what what you are trying to say is already there. So you are saying sum over all states. If I had not made this statement, then sum over all states would have been simply sum over R, sum over all states. But then, when we uh, write this together with sum over R, we mean sum over all states, each state with its probability of uh, occurrence. So, respective probability. And that total is called the partition function. Okay? Find any other question over here? Good. So actually this is very important. Over here we have made this made a contact um, 
of uh, a macroscopic way of doing calculations with macroscopic variables. These all epsilon s are actually the um, uh, macroscopic uh, energies, energies of macroscopic states. Okay, let us take examples. Examples of um, uh, simple systems and um, see how this thing works out. I have two examples in mind, um, one after the other. Um, one is a example, okay, example. Um, uh, one uh, or a, a single um, quantum harmonic oscillator. Why did you take this example? Because the energies of each um, energy of each harmonic oscillator is simply given as n plus half times h bar omega. Why is this epsilon is what I have as epsilon over here. Alright? This is familiar to you, right? Uh, this energy of uh, harmonic oscillator. H bar is the fundamental constant. H is fundamental uh, Planck's constant. Omega is uh, what, uh, uh, you know, omega is frequency kappa over m um, uh, square root. When is kappa? Okay. Um, the energy, energy, classical energy of an oscillator is p square over 2m, the kinetic energy, half mv square, if you like and then half uh, kappa x squared. So the kappa x minus kappa x is the restoring force. Minus kappa x is the restoring force and the potential energy is half kappa x squared. Okay. It is this kappa which goes into defining the uh, frequency omega. So single particle energies, single oscillator energies are given by this and oscillator therefore has several energy states. Each one of them a multiple of h bar omega and uh, that multiple is this integer n. n goes from 0 to infinity. Okay? And half signifies the zero point energy, which means when the lowest number n is equal to zero, the energy is not equal to zero, energy is half h bar omega. Okay. This is all familiar to me. Let us try and calculate the partition function for this system. Z. partition function will be um, exponential of minus beta times epsilon n and some lower form n. As simple as that. Okay? And this n will be equal to, uh, will go from 0 to infinity, we know that. And epsilon n, okay, we will write down explicitly exponential of minus beta um, n plus half times h bar omega. And therefore we can write this as uh, equal to exponential of minus half beta h bar omega coming from this term, this constant coming out of the summation and then summation over n exponential of minus beta uh, or let's say n times beta h bar omega. 
and uh, this is a this is a summation that you must have come across several times but I will do this again, do this again. Um, if you have summation over n going from 0 to infinity of exponential of minus n times any quantity x right then you write it as uh, this will be equal to you will notice now I open the summation n equal to 0 1 n equal to 1 plus exponential of minus x plus n equal to 2 exponential of minus twice x uh, plus exponential of minus 3x and so on. This is the solution. Fine. Abhi awaaz jo hai, woh better hoogi. And I can write this as 1 plus and I can take exponential of minus x common from the rest of them which will give me 1 plus exponential of minus x plus exponential of minus 2x plus minus 3x and so on. Right. And this is an infinite summation, so I can actually take the liberty of saying that this is exactly what appears on the left hand side as summation over n going from this, okay, n going from 0 to infinity exponential of minus n x. Alright, I am taking the liberty of calling this entire quantity the same as this because this looks exactly the same as this. Am I right in this Okay. And uh, therefore, uh, therefore, uh, 1 minus exponential of minus x times summation over n going from 0 to infinity exponential of minus n x is equal to 1. Okay. Is this okay? And um, therefore, this helps me calculate this summation. Summation n going from 0 to infinity exponential of minus n x is equal to 1 over 1 minus exponential of minus x. Stop me if I am going too fast. Okay. So this is this is uh, this entire summation is one over one minus one over one minus exponential of minus x. That is what I am going to use over here. So this expression z is equal to therefore exponential of minus half beta h bar omega divided by one minus exponential of minus beta h bar omega. N has disappeared. You have some lower end. N has disappeared. We have some lower N and partition function has been calculated. And this is, this is great for this particular system partition function has been calculated and then you can use this all of the relations that we wrote over there to calculate the thermodynamic quantities for this uh, for this uh, system single quantum harmonic oscillator Uh, <coughs> log z, everything requires calculating log z. Log z is uh, uh, log of the numerator minus log of the denominator. Log of the numerator is minus half beta h bar omega. 
minus log of the denominator minus log of 1 minus exponential of minus beta x bar omega. So this is log there. Okay. And internal energy can now be calculated in a straightforward manner. Internal energy is minus d by d beta of log z. So internal energy u is equal to minus d by d beta of log z. This is equal to half h bar omega. from the first term and from the second term minus the second term log means the thing comes in the denominator minus beta h bar omega and the numerator the first term gives you zero the second term gives you um, minus uh, h bar omega and uh, that minus h bar omega times exponential minus minus six plus so this is um, uh, plus minus, I'm just trying to uh, make sure that I don't make this mistake, is minus, uh, and then there is this minus sign coming from here, and then there is this minus h bar omega coming because of this exponential of minus beta h bar. You already need what you can Plus over, count of plus over. Okay. This is this minus is coming from here. And uh, then uh, when I differ start differentiating it, there is this minus sign. And then uh, I differentiate this quantity, so it is exponential, and then I respect to uh, beta, so this all there is this minus sign outside. So with that one assignment made it plus. Good. So your counting was better than my counting. Good. And what happens is that we therefore have an expression which says that u is equal to uh, half h bar omega uh, plus uh, h bar omega exponential of minus beta h bar omega over 1 minus exponential of minus beta h bar omega. And we try to be a little, little more, a little smarter by saying that look, too many exponentials um, don't look so good, so we will write this as h bar omega over exponential of beta h bar omega minus 1. Okay, that is to say, we uh, divide by exponential <coughs> of minus beta h bar omega in the numerator and denominator, and we end up with this expression. So this is internal energy of this harmonic oscillator, and it looks very much like the internal energy that we wrote up there, <coughs> as if u internal energy would have been average of these energies, single particle energies calculated. And those single particle energies would have been something like n plus half h bar omega and average of this <coughs> and average of this would have gone on to this average of n only, n bar. So it is half h bar omega plus n bar h bar omega <coughs> that sort of identifies average number of average number n as equal to um, 1 over exponential of beta h bar omega minus 1. So n gets averaged and n average is equal. This is only by, by identification.
we will take these expressions and we we'll start <coughs> working them out uh Start working, working these things out in the high and low temperature limits. Um, okay, I can uh, suppose I were to take. Uh, a connection of n quantum <laughs> quantum harmonic oscillators, n number of them, and I say that each one of them oscillates with the same frequency h bar omega. This is what this is what. Uh, Mr. Einstein did to describe <laughs> the thermodynamic properties of crystals, solids. He said that uh, in solids there are these atoms which oscillate about their average mean about their positions and these oscillations are completely independent but each of them is the same oscillation because each atom feels the same kind of restoring force as the uh, um, same, same restoring force as uh, uh, others and therefore uh, each one of them will, uh, will oscillate with the same frequency. So this is called Einstein model of um, thermal properties of crystals. Okay? And he said, collection of, take collection of n quantum harmonic oscillations. In that case, u will be equal to simply, you know, for single particle it is this much, for n particles it is n times as much. So it is um, n by 2 h bar omega uh, plus n h bar mm -hmm. omega over exponential of beta h bar omega minus. you will be equal to this. <coughs> now, at, we can look at two different limits, two temperature limits. high temperature limit and low temperature limit. Beta h bar omega is actually a ratio of the oscillator energy to the thermal energy. So when we say two temperature limits we actually say the two limits of this ratio. Temperature, uh, uh, when we say low temperature limit, we mean that uh, k times t is very small compared to h bar omega. Okay? Uh, And we will say high temperature limit. So, when we say low temperature and high temperature, we need to say low temperature with respect to what? 
It's a high temperature with respect to water. And we make comparison with uh, the, the frequency with the energy of oscillation. Summer energy with respect to energy of oscillation. So high temperature is when K times T is much larger than that. So we will look at these two limits separately. Now, when you say high temperature limit, Then we say k times t is much larger than that. Or uh, beta is very small. No, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, beta is power omega. Uh, okay, let me. Um, beta x bar omega is uh, much less than 1. Okay. High temperature limit would be beta h bar omega much less than 1. H bar omega over kT being much less than 1. So beta h bar omega being much less than 1. So going to you to, to calculate the expression for uh, internal energy u, um, Exponential of beta h power omega appearing over here only. And you are saying that uh, exponential of beta h power omega, the beta h power omega is much smaller than 1. So uh, when you have exponential of x, and you say uh, x is um, uh, very small compared to 1, then you allow yourself an expansion of the exponential. Okay? you allow yourself expansion of the exponential. So exponential of x will be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so on, knowing that all these terms that are coming in afterwards are going to be smaller and smaller in magnitude, so you can truncate it a particular time. Approximate the entire expression up after a few terms, one or two terms. So exponential of beta h bar omega in the limit of high temperature, when this is much less than 1, is approximately 1 plus beta h bar. <coughs> okay? And what we have over there in the denominator is exponential of beta h bar omega minus 1. And therefore, that uh, uh, therefore, that expression of u is uh, u is equal to uh, n h bar omega over 2, the first term, plus n h bar omega over uh, beta h bar omega. So this is actually an expression in which the term which is temperature dependent is only n over beta. So it is n kT. So this is half, this is n h bar omega plus n times kT. This constant energy plus that energy which is at the end. And therefore, if we were to calculate heat capacity in the high temperature limit, at high temperatures, this will be partial differential of U with respect to T. And that would be equal to NK, simply, at high temperatures. At high temperatures. So at high temperatures, your system behaves like a classical system, which is actually always true. A quantum mechanical system at high temperatures behaves like a classical system. Because at high temperatures, 
thermal energies are so large that the distinction between quantum levels disappears and the quantum nature disappears and therefore system behaves like a classical system and that is what is reflected over here. What does, what does low temperature mean? Low temperature limit. Low temperature limit actually amounts to saying that your beta uh, K, KT is much larger than, much smaller than H bar omega or beta is very much larger than 1. Just the opposite, beta H bar omega, I'm sorry. Beta H bar omega is very much larger than just the opposite of this. And when beta h power omega is very much larger than 1, uh, then exponential of beta h power omega, you have an expression, exponential of beta h power omega minus 1 in the denominator over there in u. And this would be, you know, 1 will be just too negligible compared to exponential of beta h bar omega. Because beta h bar omega is already very large, exponential would be even larger. So one is, so this is actually approximately exponential of beta h bar omega. With that, your uh, uh, expression over there of u will be u will be, this is for the other case, u will be equal to uh, n h power omega over 2 and then plus n h bar omega times exponential of minus beta h bar omega. This h bar omega, beta, exponential of beta h bar omega appears in the denominator and I took it to the numerator and that would be, that will look like that. And therefore, u will be equal to n h bar omega times half plus exponential of minus beta h bar. This is at low temperatures. So even at the lowest temperature, when this exponential disappears, um, uh, when beta is very, very large and therefore this quantity can go down to zero, the energies are still, the zero point energies remain. Okay? Quantum quantum systems. Zero point energies will remain. Energies will not become equal to zero. Zero point energies will remain. And if at this particular point you calculate the heat capacity, uh, by, okay, I will have to push this up. capacity is uh, partial differential of u with respect to t at constant uh, volume standard we know this but we have over there so d by dt you see beta is 1 over k times t so d by dt can be written 
as d beta by dt times t by d beta. I'm trying to convert d by dt into d by d beta. Okay? And uh, this d beta by dt will be, because t appears in the denominator, minus 1 over kt squared. So d by dt happens to be then um, minus 1 over kt squared times d by d beta. Okay, we will use that. And therefore this will be equal to minus 1 over kt squared times d by d beta of u. And um, uh, this will come out to be um, equal to uh, what? Where are we? Over there. Okay. The first term will not give you anything. Constant term. Half n h bar omega will not give you anything. The second term will give you something. So n times h bar omega is the factor outside times the second term, d by d beta of that, it will give you um, minus h bar omega uh, coming in. And I'm sorry, first of all I should uh, uh, write this minus 1 over kt squared and then start doing that, d by d beta of that, which is n times h bar omega times minus h bar omega times exponential of minus beta h bar omega is the is this expression for each of that. Okay? And this will happen to be um, uh, I let me quickly check something which uh, I may have uh, missed okay. Um, the only thing that I missed over here, telling you, and I was, I said there are n atoms. I had uh, n quantum harmonic oscillators, but each quantum harmonic oscillator will have uh, uh, three degrees of freedom. Okay, forget about that. I think I think even without that, this expression would be good. So this is uh, the expression where you will have. Uh, um, is as n times h bar omega whole squared over <coughs> k times t squared exponential of minus beta h bar omega heat capacity. And uh, what uh, Einstein said, okay, why, why don't we call this h bar omega over k as some kind of a temperature call it theta e so that beta h bar omega becomes uh, <coughs> theta e over t a dimension which was already dimensionless quantity it becomes this and therefore the final expression for C V becomes equal to um, n times k is r theta e over t whole squared times exponential of minus theta e over t. This theta e has this little e attached to it uh, where people gave it the name Einstein. So this is called Einstein temperature. As if this is a character characteristic temperature <laughs> of substances. What Einstein showed over here is that as T goes to zero, heat capacity should go to zero. It is should go to zero. Because as T goes to zero, entropy goes to zero. As entropy goes to zero, heat capacity should go to zero. But this 
goes to zero as exponential of minus theta t over t. <coughs> and experimentally he was proven wrong. So Einstein was not always successful. Okay. He was wrong and then somebody put forward another theory uh, which uh, corrected his whole calculation and uh, uh, that is taken to be the standard uh, uh, expression for heat capacity of uh, solids. But still, what Einstein did was to apply the emerging discipline of statistical mechanics and quantum mechanics together and quantum statistical mechanics to harmonic oscillator in a simple model in which all the atoms were taken to be harmonic oscillators oscillating with the same frequency obtained an expression for heat capacity. R k n times k. Uh, there is this. If you multiply k and divide by k, this will become k t squared. So edge on omega over k t square will give you beta squared. Is this this expression? Okay. So you have k over there, and n times k will give you r. Okay. Uh, this is this was one uh, application of the statistical uh, methods that we learned. There is another one which I will take up the next time. Okay, in the last lecture of the day of, of this course. Uh, the Any questions at this time?